Here's some more examples and order of operations comes into play here also. These are all fractions and the thing to remember is that the fraction bar acts as a grouping symbol. It groups the numerator and the denominator. So we need to evaluate the numerator and then evaluate the denominator and then divide. And in these it's always helpful to work it out in multiple steps. So let's do the first one. 5x plus 3 divided by 9 and we're told that x is equal to 3. So I'll rewrite the problem but instead of the x right there I'll put in the value of x, the 3. So this becomes 5 times 3 plus 3 over 9. Now 5 times 3 is 15 so the numerator here is 15 plus 3 which is 18. So I have 18 over 9 and you can see that 18 divided by 9 comes out to 2. Okay, the next one. 12 plus xz over 2z. Well, let's rewrite it. 12 plus, instead of x, we'll put in a 3. So that's 12 plus 3 times z. And, and instead of z, we'll write 4. So this is 3 times 4. Divided by 2z. Well, again, z is 4. So instead of 2 times z, I have 2 times 4. Now let's take this and write it again. But instead of 12 plus 3 times 4, let's write 12 plus 12. Because the 3 times 4 right there is simply 12. And then the 2 times 4 right down here is 8. So I have 12 plus 12 divided by 8. And you can see that 12 plus 12 in the numerator is 24. So I have 24 divided by 8, which is 3. Okay, next example. Z plus X, Z over, excuse me, Z over X plus Y. Well, let's rewrite it, but instead of Z, I write 4. Instead of X, I write 3. And instead of Y, I write negative 1. So I have 4 over 3 plus negative 1. Let's keep the 4 up top and think about this 3 plus negative 1. That's the same as 3 minus 1, which is 2. So I have 4 over 2, which is simply 2. In the next example, I have x, y, z over 3 minus y. So as before, I rewrite it. But instead of x, I put in 3, so this is 3. And instead of y, I put in negative 1, so I have a negative 1. And instead of z, I put in a 4. And notice all three of those things are multiplied together. And that's, in this case, I indicated that with parentheses. In the denominator here, I have 3 minus y, so I'll write 3 minus negative 1. Okay, up top here I have 3 times 1 times 4, which is just 12. But out of these three things, one of them is negative. So up top I have a negative 12. And on the bottom I have 3 minus negative 1. That's the same as 3 plus 1. So what I have is negative 12 over 4. Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. And the last one. 4 plus 3z over z minus 2y. Oh, so that way that's a 4x. 4x plus 3z over z minus 2y. So let's rewrite it. 4x is going to be 4 times 3 plus 3z. Well, 3 times 4, because z is 4. And that's over z, which is 4, minus 2y. And y is negative 1, so the 2 times y becomes a 2 times negative 1. Now, I wouldn't expect, expect you to do something like this in your head. I really, really encourage you to write out the intermediate steps, and sometimes a few intermediate steps as we've been doing. 
getting simpler each time until you're all the way down to your answer. So up top here, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 times 4, which is 12, over, I have 4 minus 2 times negative 1. Well, the 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2. So I have 4 minus negative 2, which is the same as 4 plus 2. And notice once again, with each step, our problem gets a little bit simpler. And it's going to get real simple in this next step. 12 plus 12 is 24. That's up top. And 4 plus 2 is 6 down below. And 24 divided by 6 comes out to 4. So there we have it, several more examples of evaluating expressions. In each case, we plugged in the values for the variables and did, did the arithmetic and got a number. In all of these cases, it worked out to nice even numbers. Uh, it doesn't always happen that way in the real world. These examples are deliberately chosen uh, because they do, because it makes demonstrating the concept a little bit easier.